My name is uh, Radha Krishna. I'm a graduate engineer from India with degrees in science and uh, engineering. I had uh, very big positions in uh, Tata's. I had the opportunity to build, acquire the land and build the first phase of Tata Motors in Pune. Yeah. Uh, before that, I had been sent abroad by Tata's to study construction all in several countries in Europe. In 1971, I decided to migrate to United States for various reasons. And in 73, I moved to California and I had been involved in building many power plants. Power plants of various types, from uh, oil burning, gas burning, uh, even the first uh, solar power plant with uh, reflecting mirrors. And I've also built uh, the first uh, geothermal power plant. and. Uh, one of the most interesting was uh, being in a senior construction management position in the building of the San Onofre nuclear power plant in the vicinity of Los Angeles. Okay. And the San Onofre nuclear power plant has two units and they are about 1200 megawatts each. And 1200 megawatts each is about the largest size of the nuclear power plants uh, till now built in the United States. Okay. And that was quite some time ago. And I was also a little bit involved in uh, in the some planning for dismantling of a nuclear power plant. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, how many total power plants approximately are there in the United States and the rest of the world? My goodness, I I, I wish I had those figures okay. at a quarter of memory. Okay. I think we have somewhere around a hundred uh, reactors in the United States. Hundred reactors. And the rest of the world probably is around another hundred and fifty or so. Okay. But that information is available if you dig a little into the internet. Okay. Um, now, why, why I asked that question was, uh, has like United States? When was the last power, nuclear power plant built in the Uni United States? Well over twenty years ago. 20 years ago. They haven't built a single one no, after that. No, what happened was when we started construction of the San Onofre nuclear power plant, uh, pretty soon we ran into a problem with the Three Mile Island reactor which went very bad. And from then on we had to revise our, uh, our designs and also the costs went up astronomically. Okay. So it was uh, not feasible to build anymore, nor do people want the nuclear power plant to be built in their state in their area. For these reasons, the hardly any no power plant has been built in the last 20 or 25 years. In the United States, only now there is a movement to build a few more nuclear power plants. Uh, but to the best of my knowledge, not one has been licensed hmm. to build till now. Okay, okay. So, and I I would presume that that's because of the major dangers uh, of a nuclear power plant that that it carries. So. So we'll be begin from uh, one by one, like uh, uh, like one of the major ones is earthquake, which not many people talk about in terms of a nuclear power plant. So can you elaborate on that? Yes, yes, uh, Satyan, it's a very important point that you have brought up. In the last few weeks I've been in India, I've been reading a few reports about the proposals for building nuclear power plants in uh, the Ratnagiri area, for example. Yeah. And uh, I myself, when I was working for Tata's in the 1960s, was involved in uh, uh, building houses and schools for poor people in Chiplun Taluk in Ratnagiri. Yeah. The reason was there was a big earthquake in Koyna. And so that area is susceptible to big earthquakes. Okay. I don't know whether anybody has studied it, the, the impact of this uh, situation on the building of the nuclear power plants mm. or not. Mm. Otherwise we are looking for a disaster. Mm. For example, even in Saranofri we found that uh, uh, there was a fault, uh, Christianata's fault was called, that is about, say, about 10, 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. But that delayed our construction by a year. You know, many of us are doubting whether it is wise to build at all in that area. Mm -hmm. So unless we have uh, very solid grounds, we should not be building anywhere where we are subject to seismic activity. Mm -hmm. Another reason is the costs are going to increase tremendously if there is seismic activity. Again, I understand that you are looking at six power plants. Yeah. It, to me, it looks like a mind-boggling mind -boggling figure of six in one place. Mm. I think it's bordering on insanity in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, I'm no great expert in any of these matters, mm. but I know the facts. Yeah. And imagine yeah. 
if you build six of them and each of them ultimately end up costing ten billion dollars, sixty billion dollars will have gone down the drain. It will be historically recorded as one of the monumental mistakes done by us. So the seismic criteria which uh, has to be taken into consideration and maybe they should even seriously consider whether we should build in an area which is so highly susceptible to mm. seismic activity. Mm. Okay. Uh, now one of the biggest uh, things that are said in favor of nuclear plant, nuclear power plants is that uh, the energy is clean and green. Like how clean and how green is it? I mean not, nobody talks about that, it's just a cliche that is used. <laughs> That's right. Clean and green sounds wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Almost sounds like a detergent advertisement for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't know what you mean by clean. Yeah. If by clean you mean that it does not release gases like a coal power plant, that's your right. They are clean. Mm. But in what other respects are they unclean? Mm. Okay, let me exaggerate a little. Mm. Suppose you have an atom bomb. Mm. It is clean. We are not even exploding. Nothing has happened to it. Yeah. If you are so like it, you can even paint it green and call it green. <laughs> so you are looking at a very, very dangerous uh, equipment, material, mm. and on the outside of it, it may look clean. Mm. But in various stages, there are some problems too. Mm. For example, when you mine it, when you process it, mm. or worst thing in my opinion is when you are uh, marine ecology. Because these high pressure water, uh, pressure, high pressure units consume millions and millions of gallons of water. Mm. And we will be drawing in the water and we will also be discharging hot water. Mm. When you draw the hot water, cold water from the ocean, what happens is a lot of marine animals get sucked into the screens. Mm. The small ones will pass through the screens and die. Mm. The big ones will get stuck and then we will have to clean them. But worse, when we put back the hot water, mm. millions of creatures will get wiped off. Mm. The whole area, a few square miles, maybe tens of square miles of the area, mm. the marine ecology will become completely destroyed, disturbed, mm. damaged mm. to various degrees. Mm. Even in Saranofri, we made many, many attempts to mitigate it, but we are still finding many of the problems which were unanticipated and the ecology has changed. Mm -hmm. Would you call it green, clean? Okay. I don't think it's the right expression to use. Mm -hmm. So majorly it's like an ecological disaster in the making. As far as uh, clean and green is concerned, if everything goes all right, you have a damage maybe in the marine ecology and in some other areas, but if it goes bad, even one of them goes bad, mm -hmm. it'll be a very big deal because if radioactivity is released, a major amount of radioactivity is released, tens of thousands of people will die. Mm. The wind direction will bring in the radioactivity mm. even to Bombay mm. or even beyond. Mm. Now, the Three Mile Island reactor in the United States came about seven to ten minutes before it blew up completely. Oh. And if that had happened, probably a few million people would have died in a matter of hours and a few million more would suffer from cancer for several of the rest of their life mm. and die. Mm. The Chernobyl reactor went up completely bad mm. and today you can see several square miles of the area, all human beings have been evacuated. Mm. Lot of multi-story buildings are all lying empty mm. because no human being can go there. Mm. It's become a ghost town. A ghost town. And how long will the ghost town stay? because the half-life of uh, the uranium that we process mm. is about 24,000 plus years. Well, that's long Tell long. me, Satyan, which civilization has lasted that many that years? Now, the oldest civilization in our own Mahinjadaro, Harappa, is about 5,000 years. Nice. And the Egyptians, maybe a little more, and then what I have read, Sumerians were slightly earlier, mm. let's say 6,000 years. Mm. And here the half life is 24,000 plus. Yeah, and that's just half the life. It still goes on for millions of years. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and the next 24,000 plus years, it becomes half as poisonous. Mm. But it's so half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth. Mm. So infinity. Yeah. So, so that is the type of material you're handling. Mm. 
and if something goes wrong yeah. and uh, at any point in these million years yeah it's not just right now yeah. and uh, there's another uh, thing that is really talked about like most of these like today the systems that are employed have computers in them and they're connected to systems all of them are interconnected with each other and like we have seen in most of our personal computers and all our global networks and all viruses and yeah. trojans and all that are that face that attack it's another form of warfare so how prone are the softwares and these things in, in a nuclear reactor and what is the danger of that that is a fairly quick question to answer because we're in december and uh, the Iranians, the Russians are building a nuclear power plant in a place called Bush. Mm. And they were to load the fuel starting sometime in the month of September, mm. that's just a few months ago. Mm. Of course, they delayed the plant by almost 10 years for political reasons. Mm. When they were about to load the power plant, just three, four months ago, we got in the papers in America and in the rest of the world that a computer virus has been introduced called Stuxnet, S-T-U-X-N-E-T, mm -hmm. and that virus is meant to damage the operation of plants, mm -hmm. not necessarily nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have got a refinery in Chambord, mm -hmm. and there you have got very heavy temperature, boilers are working, and uh, distillation equipment is working, and the computers and the sensors read it. But if that reading does not show the actual figure, it's a matter of minutes before the whole thing will blow. So such a virus was successfully introduced into the Busher nuclear power plant when they just started loading of the power plant. Mm -hmm. So that has made a lot of people think at what a dangerous phase we are coming into in the world today. Mm -hmm. And the Iranians claim that they have been able to isolate it. They, have, they don't deny that there is no such virus. They say that we have been infected. Yeah. We are trying to find out who did it. Yeah. Their suspicion is among Israelis and the United States. Mm. But today you can never know who has infected it from where. Mm. But the fact it is infected is already recorded, mm. accepted. Mm. But the Iranians claim that they have been able to isolate it and proceed with it. Mm. We really don't know. That means we are coming into a phase in which a bunch of young fellows, old people like me, who won't be very capable of developing viruses. <laughs> yeah. So the younger people can sit in a small apartment yeah. and create a virus, and they may be able to create <coughs> a situation which previously needed a, a aircraft carrier or a sophisticated missile to come in. <laughs> wow. so, so that, that is the cyber war. Yeah. Now also see what has happened since uh, since we have the 9-11 in America mm. and everywhere you have a security problem. Uh -huh. And the other aspect which I don't know whether uh, has been discussed in this country is internal sabotage. Mm. People who pretend to be alright mm. and they may be sabotaging. Mm. Plus mental problems of people. Mm. Somebody who thinks a little berserk. Mm. He goes a little berserk, he could create a wreck. So one has to be prepared for all these things. Mm. It is a different matter if you are handling some material which is not very dangerous, but here you are looking at extremely, extremely dangerous material with very long term consequences. Mm. And also, like at least in this case, there are six power plants at uh, one place. I and mean, what's the wisdom in doing that? Oh my god. First, when I heard it was six power plants in a row, I was shocked.